So the other day I was at my local Goodwill and I noticed something out of the corner of my eye and it looked like a MacBook. Now, you guys know me, if I see a MacBook out of the corner of my eye when I'm in any location, I'm gonna go check it out. And what it turned out to be was this, a unibody MacBook Pro, but specifically the original unibody MacBook Pro. You can tell by the fact that it has this fun little hatch that comes off at the bottom here. That was only on the original unibody that launched in late 2008. Now what's interesting about this MacBook is they listed it as broken. So I bought it for just $20 in a non-functioning state. However, you may have noticed when I took that bottom case off, there's no hard drive in it. So how could it be working? So my hypothesis is that this is a perfectly fine computer that just needs a little bit of attention. So my goal for today's video is going to be to get this computer up and running as cheaply as humanly possible. I'm only 20 bucks into this thing, and honestly, it's in pretty decent shape. It could use a little bit of a cleaning, but really doesn't look too bad. And I think that with some very cheap parts, I might be able to get this computer to be surprisingly usable. But first, before I do any of that, we need to test it to see if this is even possible. Today's video is sponsored by iFixit. That is my go-to source for parts, tools, and especially repair guides. Now, today's video hopefully is gonna be a pretty easy and DIYable project, but if you have never opened up a computer before, then iFixit is the place to go. It's where I learned to do every single repair that I have done on this channel. I would also highly recommend picking up a ProTec toolkit if you do repairs with any sort of regularity or even just want to fix your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons or something, it's definitely worth picking up. To check out iFixit, you can head down to the links in the description below where you'll also find all of the parts and tools that I'll be using in today's video to repair this MacBook Pro. As you're about to see, it's not as hard as you think to get a cheap and fully functional, totally usable MacBook Pro, so I've got all the links that you might need down below. So as we hop into this, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe. Let's get started. So let's get an idea of what exactly needs to be done on this computer. And to do that, we need to plug in a USB Mac OS installer and our power connector, because I don't know if this battery is charged or not. And this should allow us to see what exactly needs to be done with this computer. So let's go ahead and power it on. Right, one beep. Another beep. Now, if you're like me and you've worked on a bunch of MacBooks and you've memorized the codes, then you would know that one beep every five seconds means that it's not detecting any RAM. So that's the type of thing that if you know what you're looking for, you hear that sound and you're like, oh, there's no RAM installed. That's, that's an easy fix. But if you're working at a, an electronics recycler or a Goodwill, then chances are you have a beeping MacBook and, and you probably think, Oh God, pull the plug, get rid of this thing. It, it doesn't work. It's still going. Opening up one of the first gen unibodies is very similar to the other ones with the added step of this handy dandy little battery and hard drive compartment. Now this honestly was such a great feature, but I understand why they got rid of it. It allows you really easy access to the hard drive without having to take off the bottom panel and you can even replace the battery without any screws. It's kind of crazy. The way that this thing works is the battery gets latched in when the bottom cover locks down. Now, in terms of getting into the actual guts of the machine, it's basically identical to any unibody MacBook Pro. We just have a number of Phillips head screws placed around this back panel and then it'll pop off. <laughs> well, there's your problem. So we do have RAM installed. Well, installed is a relative term. It's not seated properly. That explains why it wouldn't be detecting any RAM. So what exactly are we looking at here? Oh, yes. Okay, this is, this is huge. We're looking at four gigabytes of DDR3. That is really good because that means 
that I only need one more four gigabyte dim and we can max this thing out at eight gigs. That's really nice. If I'm not mistaken, I think I might have another one of these in my RAM drawer. And no, I'm not making that up. See, I told you I have a RAM drawer. Behold, my many, many sticks of RAM. So I think most of these are from like 2011. So that's a 10600S. 10600S, we're looking for DDR3. No, that's 1333. Oh, hang on. That should do it. What is this? 8500S, let's go. Okay, we got it. We're gonna max out this computer with eight gigs of RAM. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that installed. And then all we need to do is test that this machine is going to boot up. And then we just need to figure out a storage solution for this guy. And I think I've got one in mind that should be pretty tasty. So with our RAM installed, let's go ahead and power this thing up. Now keep in mind, we don't have an SSD or a hard drive installed, so it's not gonna boot fully. But that's a good sign, right? No more beeps, just a posting MacBook Pro. And there you go. See, this is how I find good deals. Just do a little bit of extra due diligence and granted, take a little bit of a risk. Like there was always a chance that this thing was gonna be completely water damaged. And in fact, I still haven't gotten it booted. So there could be issues that I don't know about. The biggest thing that we still need to do is the hard drive. And I've had an idea. Now, full disclosure, I bought the MacBook Pro about two weeks ago and it's just been sitting around while I've been waiting to make a video on it. And during that time, I got an email that Micro Center is offering 240 gigabyte SSDs for free with a coupon. Now, Micro Center has these kind of deals all the time. I've gotten flash drives, SD cards, micro SD cards. They always have like this little free coupon. And this time, it's a 240 gigabyte SSD, which is perfect for this video because it means that we can upgrade, put in a good size SSD for $0 on a $20 MacBook. That's pretty freaking awesome, don't you think? Now, what I think is going on, the reason why I think they're getting rid of these SSDs is in store they started carrying 256 gigabyte Inland Professional, which is sort of their like generic brand that they carry. The 240s are sort of the previous gen and now the 256s are coming in with different NAND storage, and so the 240s gotta go. And here it is. So no nothing fancy, nothing super crazy, but we're getting read speeds of rated up to 530 megabytes per second, and it's quoting write speeds of 440. So it's not gonna knock your pants off, but this is much better than what we would be able to do in terms of hard drives, and it was free. But I don't want to just stick an SSD in and then put, I think the 2008s can run up to El Capitan. Uh, what I like to do on older MacBooks is use DOS Dude patchers to put slightly newer versions of macOS. Now, I'm not going to be able to put Big Sur or Monterey on a 13-year-old MacBook. However, the DOS Dude macOS Catalina patcher works really well and I've used it a bunch of times. So I think that would be the perfect fit for this computer to get it most of the way to modern macOS, but not too far that it's gonna be buggy and weird. So now that we know that this thing works, there's only a few steps left. Number one, whip out the Protect Toolkit to screw in the back panel. Number two, install the SSD. And number three, use the DOS Dude Catalina Patcher, which happens to also be on a free Micro Center flash drive to install macOS Catalina on this machine. It's super easy to use the DOS Dude Patcher. I'll leave a link in the description below. All you have to do is follow the setup and use one of these flash drives. And then it basically behaves like a normal macOS installer. And you just install it like you would with any other version of macOS.
So here it is, quite possibly one of the cheapest and yet also easiest MacBook projects I've done before on this channel. Now, when I say cheap, what I mean is, is absolutely dirt cheap. That free SSD plus the fact that this MacBook was only 20 bucks at a Goodwill means that the total cost of these upgrades, if you were to buy the RAM on its own, because most people probably don't have a RAM drawer like I do, that's about $16. So in total, this MacBook was about $36. So 36 bucks for a fully working MacBook Pro. And yes, it's an old one, okay? It's 13 years old, but honestly, it doesn't look 13 years old. Okay, maybe it looks nine years old because they sold this design for a couple of years, but it's not like this looks like some ancient medieval piece of technology that's not gonna be useful or do anything. And in fact, with macOS Catalina, it works pretty well. You might not know this, but the original 2008 MacBook Pros are nearly identical internally to the later and much more popular 2009 models. They have the same NVIDIA 9600M GT graphics. They have more or less the same Core 2 duos. The only real differences are obviously that battery hatch that you have on the bottom, as well as the fact that this has a compact express card instead of an SD card slot. The screen is a little worse. You can probably notice it flickering on, on camera throughout this video. And you know, a couple of minor little things like that. But these are basically the same as the newer and more expensive 2009 models. And as such, they're surprisingly usable. So if you wanna do something like this for yourself, well, first of all, I've got all the resources linked in the description below. Everything from cheap RAM to cheap SSDs if you're not able to get one for free. I've also got all of the iFixit repair guides and parts and tools that I could find pertinent to this machine and put those down there as well because if you wanna do something like this, iFixit is the way to go. They've got all of the repair guides, they've got the tools that you need to actually do the job. But if you're looking to do something like this yourself, you're probably gonna to have to get a little bit creative. You're not gonna be finding $20 MacBooks where the only issue is someone didn't check the RAM was seated properly on eBay. That's just not where those types of deals are typically able to be found. Search recycling centers. See if family members are trying to get rid of old computers. See if businesses or schools are throwing out devices. There are a ton of these old things that just go to waste every year. And if you employ a little bit of creativity, you can save one for under 40 bucks. Certainly would not peg this as a 13 year old device. It, it may be old, but it doesn't feel like it's a teenager. So that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and honestly, I hope you try it yourself. If you employ a little bit of creativity, you too can find yourself a cheap MacBook Pro that's perfectly good, that can be saved from a landfill and given a second life in a new home. So definitely give it a try. And while you're doing that, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. Let me know if you'd like to see me try any other similar projects by leaving a comment down below. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.